and Alex, and Alex, see, it's not just it's not just will China allow this or that or whatever. There are global forces that have been unleashed that have to do with techno scientific development, which have to be channeled in one or another direction, right? And this is what the accelerationists, to get into a discussion of futurism, this is what the accelerationists have right. As I'm going to suggest, I think they have a lot wrong also. There are serious problems with the accelerationist worldview of people like Nick Land. Um, you know, people kept telling me, like, there are all these articles that were saying, you know, uh, Giorgiani, you know, his thought is Landian or something. He's in a dark enlightenment, you know, tradition of Nick Land. I'd never read Nick Land until very recently, um, uh, after being annoyed at all these references comparing me to Nick Land. Um, uh, but when I did read Land, I saw that there are some ways uh, uh, in which, you know, the accelerationists have uh, the problem of the, of the singularity right, and there are other ways in which they fail miserably, and, and in which I think Prometheism is a much more adequate view. Um, but one thing that the accelerationists understand is that, and, and this goes back to Heidegger, and you know, I know Nick Land read Heidegger, so his thought is coming in some way from out of Heidegger, and then is significantly influenced by Deleuze. One thing they have right is that there's a certain autonomous quality to this global techno-scientific development. It's, it's like a demonic force. It is acting in, a, in, a, in the manner of demonic possession to organize resources, to uh, develop systematic configurations of industrial production and economic development, which are aiming at an end that is not even clear to us. We're just caught up in it. We're like sleepwalkers or mesmerized people who are being used by the global inframing network of techno-scientific development increasingly to a, a, accomplish an inhuman end. And Land sees this in terms of the genesis of an artificial intelligence in the future, which is, which is using liberal capitalism, neoliberal capitalist economic productivity, in order to develop uh, the material basis for the inception of its own consciousness. So it's a kind of retrocognitive view of an artificial intelligence in the future reaching backwards toward, through time in order to create the conditions for its own actualization. And you know you can see that his thinking, especially in the context in which it was developed, the, the historical context in which it was developed, the social milieu that shaped it, it's, I think, influenced by the Terminator and you know these kind of narratives of like Skynet you know, and time travel and all this business and that we see in, in the Terminator franchise in science fiction. But the point is this, that it's not so much that the Chinese will stop us from, you know, the, achieving this imperium that you want to see uh, with our space colonization and so forth. It's that the Chinese may grapple with this demonic force in a more serious way than we are, and the Chinese may align themselves with it so that they develop a parasitic relationship with this emerging artificial intelligence, where the Chinese Confucianist, collectivist, hive-minded mentality encourages the development of the artificial intelligence and as the artificial intelligence comes online, like a newborn child, it rewards its parent, namely the Chinese social system that brought it into being. That's the danger, is that if the Chinese are the ones who shepherd us through the technological singularity, a feedback loop will develop between them and these various post-human technologies, including, let's say, genetic engineering. because they may re-engineer our genome in ways that tweak personality toward a more cooperative, as they like to put it, society. So, so they may actually, I mean, look, 
They may increase IQ. They're already the highest IQ population in the world, and they certainly may use gene editing to increase IQ. But what good is high IQ if you don't have the genetic factors of personality that incline you toward bold exploration, inquisitiveness, innovation, creativity, spontaneity? And they're going to narrow all these factors of personality using genetic engineering because it leads to a more controllable society, and the AI is going to tell them to do this. The artificial intelligence is going to become their goddamn Confucianist oracle that's going to tell them, look, edit the genome in this way and that way, and you'll have more peace and social order. That's the nightmare that we're facing right now. If we don't take seriously the uh, task of achieving global hegemony based on a Promethean ethos. I couldn't agree more with you on the subject because what you just described, it sounds like the most disturbing dark form of totalitarianism ever seen it will make soviet communism and nazi germany look like a joke literally literally Absolutely. Like a joke because you have this reinforcement brought by technology technological advancements right which fortifies the social system through a reward system to fortify the same technological system and it's literally you end up in an ouroboros in a vicious circle right and then, That's right. you, and then you put chains on the rest of the world. And then you get the end of history, but the bad end of history. And that's why we need to challenge the Chinese on the basis of a Promethean futurism. And here's where people like Nick Land are totally off base. It, you, you shouldn't encourage this sort of inhuman artificial intelligence from coming into being and just you know, throw your hand, hands up. In that way, actually... The accelerationists are similar to the traditionalists in thinking that you know we're we're sort of enmeshed in forces that are beyond our control and there's nothing really that we can do to resist. You know the the um, and this is why you find far right wing accelerationism as well, and not just the kind of futurist accelerationism, but accelerationism among people who believe we're in the Kali Yuga because they want the Kali Yuga to end sooner. So because they think then the golden age is going to, you know, come the new golden age and the devas are going to rule society again and all this nonsense. OK, uh, so you've had this strange convergence between sort of accelerationist futurism and those traditionalists who want to expedite the, the uh, end of the Kali Yuga. Um, and I would resist both of those groups of people on the basis of a futurism that is explicitly Promethean, that is archeo futuristic in the sense that it reaches back toward the mythos and the archetype of Prometheus, which is archaic. It goes back to Ar archaic Greece. It reaches back to this mythos as the humanistic basis, the ethical basis for futuristic developments of science and technology. And I think that, you know, um, this is the direction that we potentially could have gone in the 1930s in Italy, at least, where you saw a collaboration between Marinetti and Mussolini. But the problem was that Mussolini was too traditionalist in his outlook, and Marinetti was too off the deep end futurist accelerationist, where Marinetti said stupid things like, we should go into the Uffizi Museum with sledgehammers and smash all the Renaissance sculptures and tear up all the... All the uh, uh, um, uh, classical, uh, tear up all the Renaissance paintings because they are chaining Italy to its past. And, you know, as long as we are laboring in the shadow of these great achievements of the past, you know, we'll never uh, develop, in, you know, uh, uh, any new innovations and we will never be challenged to be a creative people again. Okay, I understand the rationale, but it's an idiotic thing to say. And it, it has the same cast of mind. You see the same cast of mind betrayed in that as you see in somebody like Nick Land. So the Marinetti, you know, his, his type of futurism was a little too off the deep end in that direction and uh, suffered from a lack of understanding of the need for a certain kind of heritage that's archaic and, and primordial, but as the basis for futuristic development. And so this is another way in which Prometheism is related to traditionalism in that it's affirming a particular tradition, namely the Promethean one, which is ironically counter-traditional. Prometheus is the god who's a rebel against all gods. And so Prometheism is properly speaking, in a strict sense, counter-traditional. Very much in the way that René Ganon 
talks about the counter initiation and counter tradition in uh, the, uh, the uh, what's the book called? The Sign of the Times, um, The Reign of Quantity and the Sign of the Times. Uh, Gunon draws a distinction between anti tradition and counter tradition. And anti tradition is like modern materialism, you know, the Jacobinism of the French Revolution and, you know, modern materialistic reductionist science and, uh, you know, modern neoliberalism and liberal democracy and all of this. And, he, and, and degenerate forms of religion that go along with a neoliberal society and that, that exist in the shadow of mechanistic materialism. That's the anti tradition. But then Ganon envisions the coming of what's called the counter tradition, which is not going to be reductively materialistic or mechanistic, which is actually initiatic. It actually has, it is occultist. And it is going to involve the recognition of psychic abilities and the development of latent, you know, parapsychological capacities in man. Uh, and it's going to have a relationship not just to one particular tradition, but to all the different esoteric traditions. And Ganon is horrified by this. He, he sees um, uh, the, uh, theosophy, Helena Blavatsky's theosophy, as a precursor to something like this, where you have a kind of occultism that fuses different elements of various traditions and it, it is developing a science that's post-materialistic, that's a spiritual science, like Rudolf Steiner's idea of the spiritual science. And Gunan, you know, Gunan, the guy who converted to Islam, let's keep in mind, is horrified by all of this. Well, I'm sorry, but, you know, <laughs> this is how I see Prometheism. It is the, strictly speaking, counter-tradition. And in that sense, it's intimately related to traditionalism. It is a kind of futurism that is uh, rooted in a, a, a type of primordial uh, mythos, namely that of Prometheus. It is a kind of archaeo-futurism.